My next guest, served at the People Banks of China, is also former deputy managing director of the International Monetary Fund. Zhu Min, welcome to Bloomberg Surveillance. First Thank of you. all, um, how do you see the China, the, the Chinese, actually delivering on their part of the trade deal with the U.S.? Well, the trade deal actually is, is, is quite good for, for China side because you think about China imports, right? And because China needs to import those things, the soybeans, all those things, and energy, all those things. And particularly on the structural reform side, opening financial market, protect the IP, you know, improve the business environment. It's all things China need. I think this is very important. China is moving from roughly $10,000 per capita to middle income to you know, fifteen thousand dollar per capita high income categories in the next few years. I think international experience tell us in this particular moment, open door, bring the international competition, improve the business environment. This is the key issue for China. So I think this deal is is very much from China's own interests. Do, do, does the world and does you know the Western world understand what kind of form Chinese capitalism will look like in in ten fifteen years? Well, in, in ten fifteen years, I mean, if you're looking for the, the, the cultural history, China being the central bank for 5,000 years, you know. So collect, collective is really a big issue, you know. Uh, it's more centralized in the 5,000 years. So China may have a different form, but obviously uh, a market-based run the economy, so bring the people better life is really the key objective for all the Chinese. We, we've seen a number of defaults in China. Is that a good or a bad thing? Is it letting steam out or, or can it be something more sinister? What defaults do you mention? Some of the defaults in some of uh, you know the small brokerage companies. Uh, there seems to be companies oh, 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 actually come out with, yeah, with I, defaults. I, no, I think th those are good things. Are good things because that's exactly let the market play the role. I mean, think about China have a pretty high debt and the old over leverage is still a concern. So let those small companies go, you know, defaults. And I think this is a good thing is because it's in a world getting the whole system a little bit more healthy. You will continue to see those things happen. Um, I think that's a good, the market should play a role, the state should not protect them, make sure those guys can live forever. So if you also look at the opening of the financial sector to, foreign, uh, to foreigners in China, do you think that will be quicker than we think or actually slower? I think it will be quicker than your thought. I mean, you see, UBS is here, JP Morgan is here, S&P is there, Pepper is there, Bridgewater is there, JP Morgan is there, BlackRock is there, everyone's there. I mean, one thing that's amazing today, foreign capital account more than 10% of the Chinese equity market trading volume today. This is incredible, from 2% just 12 months ago. So I think because the market is big, all the foreign financial institutions are really moving. But it will take some time for them okay. to get used to the local environment, the market, and the regulatory framework. So do you think that trend will continue from China? what we saw last year? Is this just going to open up more and more and more? In my personal experience, because I, I see more of my friends come to see me. <laughs> you know, try to see you know, how in the market will be and what will be the business opportunity for them. So what do they ask you? The key issue is how do you do the business in China? How, you know, how, how the, really the, the openness is real and uh, what about the regulatory framework and uh, what is the cost, you know? So I think those are all very interesting strategic issues for the business. And, but I think most of the people feel the Chinese financial market is yeah. such a big market, they cannot just miss it. Uh, the only things they made their internal strategy. I told them, the ball is not in China, it's in your ballroom. Because China is so big. If you want to do business in China, the key issue is the scale. Uh -huh. If you want to play big, do move to China, but you have to get approved from your board. So the ball is not in China, it's in your side. So uh, what happens when you look at you know, the US-China phase one deal? Are we actually going to see a phase two this year? Or could both countries live without a phase two deal? I think a phase one deal is good. I mean, focus on trade. I think that's one thing. Reduce the tension is most important, but also have a very broad coverage. Touch many things around for IP, technology transfer, IP protection, and the business, uh, the environment improvements, all those things, right? Um, so I think it's good for both sides to continue the dialogue. I would prefer to have a more broad sort of economic dialogue rather than you know, narrow defined uh, trade. Because being number one, number two, biggest economy in the world, these two countries have to talk, and they have to talk in a very broad way. So I very much expect to, to see a trade uh, economic dialogue.
Um, I mean, there's, there's a number of questions, of course, about trade, which we'll get to in a second. But how would you describe the world economy right now? We had a recession scare last year. Has that now gone away? I think with the trade deal, people are much more relaxed, right? I think it will bring global growth roughly 0.2, 0.3% back. Although growth remained low, I think last year is 2.9. This year probably will be around 3 to 3.1. Still in the low boundary, I think that's one thing. And the liquidity is still ample, right? In, in, in the last year, I mean, more than 40 central banks have cut more than 70 interest rates. We're once again in a cutting uh, mood, right? So liquidity and pricing market should be okay. Although everybody understand the equity market is way high, we are all at the end of cycle in financial market and in business cycle. But the, the, the appetite is still there. So I think but, the 2020 should be okay, yeah, economically yeah, and financially. But are, have central banks done too much so that it doesn't force countries to spend? Right. Are we relying too much on central banks? We're relying very much on central banks, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, the central bank once again become the only game in the town. Yeah. But uh, given the very particular situations, you have very low inflation rates, yeah. you have a low and a growth rates, right? And uh, you have a limited fiscal space, monetary policy is still the way to keep the, 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 the growth, to, to, to make the, the economy run, right? Yeah. So in that sense, I think the central bank is doing their best. Yeah. But we really need to figure out how you know we can get out this liquidity trap. How the bank and the phys physical body can work together in the near future. As I very much hope this doubles meeting will be able to bring the central bank and the Ministry of Finance sit down to talk about. So, uh, talk to me about PBOC. How's it changed since you left? Well, PBOC changed a lot. We move more to uh, the market-based exchange rate. I think that's that's more important things, and we we also liberal liberalize further. The interest rates now. Interest is very much market based, which is also important. We, we, we bring, because of that, we'll be able to build on the hedge market. Uh, another thing, uh, the, the central bank is very tough on P2P, mm -hmm. which created mm -hmm. a lot of problems, and also deleveraging process was tough in the past two years, but now we move to stabilize yeah. leveraging. Because um, if you deleverage too strong, too fast, you can create a problem. Yeah. Yeah. So I think stabilizing leveraging it's it's a proper policy today so i think the financial sector actually the risk is just coming down size and uh, things are getting better Sh should we worry about shadow banking in china or was this a problem of no i know? think the shadow bank is gone i think three years ago shadow bank is a real concern because and there's off off balance activities on the wealth management you know the money goes nowhere p2p is really everywhere right so it was really tough uh, since 2017 to try to bring those off of balance assets back to the banking mm -hmm. assets and try to close these P2Ps. I think that today, shadow banking is really not the key issue. The key issue is a monetary policy transmission me mechanism, make sure the liquidity moves to the real sector.